How's it going guys? Today we're going to be looking at a PC that I recently built for $200 and yes, it will be capable of playing video games such as GTA, Minecraft of course, Fortnite, and even Apex Legends. Unfortunately, if you're trying to play Cyberpunk, this build isn't going to be for you, but for $200, I hope you wouldn't expect that. I thought this would be a really good video idea for my tech channel because recently, the prices for graphics cards, they've gone up to ridiculous numbers because you literally can sell your old graphics card that you bought last year for probably $100 to $200 more than you bought it for. So as you guys could tell, it's a little difficult to build a PC in this market right now, but it's not impossible and I'm going to be showing you exactly how I did it and how you can make a PC for yourself for $200. If you guys are looking for just a tutorial on how to build a PC, make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe because I will be making one of those, but in the meantime, I'll have a link to one down below that's pretty good and not associated with The Verge whatsoever. But if you guys would just like to see a build idea that you guys could build yourself and get similar results, then this is the video for you. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and clicking on this video. If you guys haven't already, make sure you slap that subscribe button if you guys are into tech because we're going to be building way more PCs. I already have three more that I'm going to make videos on and a review and it's just a lot. But let's talk about the specs of this PC and how I got the parts. All right, so this PC has, wait for it, an Athlon X4 760K quad core processor. Now, the quad core processor really helps us out here because it is an older processor, but it does have four cores. Athlons are a pretty old processor. They were built before the FX processors, but they're still a decent price because you could literally buy one of these for like 20 bucks. But I'll talk to you guys exactly how I bought everything right after I go over all the specs. And then for the graphics card, we got a R7 260X, which is a lower end graphics card. It's two gigabytes, but it's kind of hard to get anything that's super nice right now for a reasonable price. I actually got this one for a great deal and I'll share that with you in just a moment. We got eight gigs of wonderful DDR3 RAM. Um, I know what you're thinking. For the price, you're not gonna be building a DDR4 system. Trust me. For the boot drive, we have 120 gig SSD by I think it was like Kingston or something. And then for the hard drive, just an extra hard drive I had laying around, 200 gigabytes. The PSU was a 450 watt. It was basically just some random brand I found on eBay. I know it's not the best, but it's a low end system. Then for the motherboard, we actually got a pretty nice one. It was a MSI A78M E35. It is basically a military class motherboard, whatever that means. But overall, the build looked very nice. All right, so I got my notes out. We're gonna look at what we paid for each item. All right, so for the CPU, motherboard, RAM, and CPU cooler, we paid a whopping $100. That is a very hard deal to get. And um, basically you just have to keep searching. The hardest part about building PCs right now is finding parts for a reasonable price that aren't like price gouging. I actually forgot to mention, I got the GPU in that combo too. So for a hundred dollars, I got a CPU, motherboard, RAM, and a graphics card, a CPU cooler. He was a really nice guy. All the stuff worked very well. Make sure you guys just go over if there's any damage on the motherboard, bent pens, or if there's a giant gouge taken out of it, which happened to me recently. They didn't bother to tell me that one, but that was a different build. For the case, we got a Cooler Master Q300L, which I know is not the best case in the world because the airflow is kind of garbage, but it's a cheap case and it looks pretty cool. For the PSU, we paid about $30, it wasn't too bad. For the SSD, technically that's $22, but I ripped one out of my actual system. And then for the hard drive, it was mine, free to me. But you guys could get some equivalent for like 10 bucks. Windows was already on this motherboard, so we didn't have to pay for that. So that makes our final price $196. That is super cheap for a PC build, just so you guys know. So PC building is not dead. You guys could still find good deals out there, even in crazy markets like this. So you guys just have to keep searching. Now let's talk about the build and how that case was for me. So overall, I would say this case was pretty nice to build in. It had a lot of good cable management options, but the thing is, the power supply is not hidden whatsoever. It's just kind of out there in the open, like some older cases. So it does have like a little tented plastic side panel. It's not like a glass one. So you can scratch it really easy, which I did notice, but uh, it is tented, which I like. So it's not just like a see-through panel because sometimes when you have older systems like this and a power supply right there, you don't want to just have it very clear. Everything went together really well. I had zero problems with this motherboard and processor working together and everything kind of just worked. The graphics card actually ran pretty well. And um, fun fact, 
This graphics card has a little like six pin on the front of it, not on like the front side, but like on the actual front on the opposite end of the HDMI. So I was very confused for about two hours trying to figure out why the computer wasn't working. Then I realized it actually did need external power. Wasn't my brightest moment, but yeah, we'll live with it. For the CPU cooler, it was just a stock one, which I know can get a little loud for AMD because it's the cooler before they used all the Ryzen ones. It's um, a little annoying, but hey, for the price, that's what you get. It's gonna cool the processor just fine. Each of these builds always gets new thermal paste as well, so it stays nice and cool. The hard drive was actually in good condition. I already checked it because I like to check it for all my builds because I do sell these, which is a fun process on Facebook Marketplace. The actual design on this case is kind of just like magnetic sheets or a dust filter. And um, I think that's the problem on why they don't get really good airflow. Plus it only comes with like one fan. So we went ahead and stuck an RGB fan from a Montec case that I had. And that really helps spice the build up because you gotta have some RGB. So here is the final product. It's an all right looking PC and for $200, you guys could actually play some games. So I do benchmark all my PCs that I build. Sometimes I do more games than others. This PC was actually able to play a lot of games, even some that are kind of harder to run. So GTA 5, we got 35 FPS on high and then medium gave us 50 FPS. Fortnite gave us 35 FPS on high, medium was 80. Cyberpunk was a whopping like 20 FPS on low settings, so probably not playable. Minecraft, 60 FPS, easy. Warzone, 30 FPS on lower settings. And Apex, about 50 FPS with some medium to low settings. So for $200, you guys could play GTA, Apex, Minecraft, Fortnite, no problem, probably several more games. This was able to play World of Warcraft, League of Legends, stuff like that with ease. I don't record gameplay of every game just because it takes forever and I build a lot of PCs. So Fortnite is all you get for this one. As you guys can see, it runs pretty smooth. So anyways, that is the $200 build if you guys are looking for something to flip or if you guys just want a gaming PC. If you guys do need any computer building parts, make sure you guys read my description down below. I have some affiliate links if you'd like to help support my channel. Anyways, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Make sure you guys drop a like if you're still here. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll I'll see you guys on my next tech review.